Hello Year 3 and welcome to today's reading class. Today's date is the 2nd of March 2021 and our learning objective for today is to infer. And the skill we're going to be using is our skill of inference, our inference skill. I know that you looked at this last week with Miss Fernandez and the definition of the skill is finding evidence and using clues to understand about a text. So we're going to look more at that today and really try and understand what that means. The question this week is what evidence is there that? So we're going to use this question to help us to infer things from the text. What evidence is there that? And this will help us to understand things about the text that aren't actually written in the text. The way we will um, answer these questions, the steps we're going to take, is to find key words in the text related to the question and then give information from the text that helps us to develop our understanding of the text and what's going on. First of all, let's have a quick uh, discussion about what inference is. We have a poster here that says, Inference is the process of making an educated guess about a text based on the clues it provides and our understanding of the world. So you may have heard this many times. The idea of inference is we use the things we know already about the world, our existing knowledge, and then we add that together with things that we can see in the text and then we can um, make guesses about what the text is trying to say that aren't necessarily written in the text. Let's look at an example then of what we're talking about. So here's a question, we'll read the text in a second, but the, the question says, look at Meet Charlie Small, which is a text we're about to read, and it says, what evidence is there that Charlie has met gorillas on his past adventures? Give two ways. So we're thinking about Charlie meeting gorillas in his past adventures. So let's look at the text. The text is here, Meet Charlie Small, and we can scan the text for the word gorilla, and that might help us to find some good evidence to answer this question. So let's have a look. When Charlie Small was eight years old, he just popped out to go exploring. Something strange happened to him. Since then, he has got, uh, he's never gotten any older. He's still eight years old, but he has had lots of different adventures helped by his friend, the inventor Jakeman. We recently caught up with Charlie and asked him some questions. Tell us about some of your adventures. I've traveled in space, been king of gorillas, joined a gang of cutthroat pirates, and lots more. Aha, so we have that word there, gorillas. So this is a piece of evidence to tell us that in his past adventures, Charlie has met with gorillas, because that's what the question asked about. Let's have a bit more of a read. What was your most exciting adventure? The Mummy's Tomb, so no gorillas there. What are your favorite pastimes? Riding my hover scooter, swinging through trees, battling my arch enemy. What other languages can you speak apart from gorilla? I can speak a little bit of mole, I can understand the Howls of Bremer, the White Wolf, and I can speak Chimp too. Aha, so this question here, what other languages can you speak apart from Gorilla? This must mean that the person who is asking the question knows that Charlie can speak Gorilla. Now, if he can speak Gorilla, language of gorillas, then he must have met them in the past. So these are two good pieces of evidence to suggest that Charlie has met Gorillas. Coming back to our question then, which asked, what evidence is there that Charlie has met gorillas on his past adventures? Well, the first way we saw in the text was that Charlie was once the king of the gorillas, which must mean, this is very good evidence, that he has met gorillas in the past. If he was the king, surely he met some gorillas. And another piece of evidence is that Charlie can speak gorilla. If he can speak the language of gorilla, this is very good evidence, again, that he has met gorillas in the past. So returning to our text that we are reading, the gnat and the lion, let's get the pictures up, there's our gnat. We're coming back to the gnat and the lion and we're going to ask questions about this story that, need, um, that we will have to find evidence to support. So let's start with the story. Far, far away in a hot land called Africa lived a gnat and a lion. These two creatures were complete opposites. One was weak and one was strong. One was huge and one was tiny. One was fierce and one was timid. They met one dark night and this is what happened. The gnat had gone to sleep. 
He made himself a swinging hammock on a blade of grass, and he was snoring gently. The lion was awake. He was hunting, and his roar could be heard in the distance. It woke the gnat. What is that? he asked. The lion roared again. The sound was even louder. It's getting closer, thought the gnat, holding his breath. A minute later, the lion came into view. When the gnat saw who it was, he felt relieved. Oh, he said, it's only you. This annoyed the lion. Only me, he murmured sulkily, narrowing his yellow eyes. Are you aware I am the king of the beasts? When lions narrow their eyes and murmur silkily, they are at their most dangerous. But the gnat wasn't worried. He opened his tiny mouth and yawned. Urgh. You may be the king of the beasts, he said, but I can outwit you any time. The lion snorted. Ha, he said, I could flatten you with one swipe of my paw. The gnat stood up on his spindly legs. Go on then, he said. The lion raised his paw above his head and brought it down as hard as he could. The gnat jumped out of the way. Mist, he said. Humming a little tune, he began buzzing round the lion's head. Zzz, zzz, diddly dee, diddly dee, zzz, 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 try and catch me. The lion was furious. He twisted his head this way and that. He snapped, he snarled, he swirled his tail, he swiped with his paws, but the gnat was too nimble. A thought came into the lion's head. If I keep perfectly still, the gnat will settle down and I can pounce. But the gnat didn't settle down. He acted quickly. He flew straight up the lion's nose and began to bite. Roaring with pain, the lion shook his head. He stuffed his claws up his nose. The gnat pulled the hairs inside the lion's nostrils. Make me the king of the beasts, he called. Never, roared the lion. The gnat bit him again. The lion's nose began to swell. He could hardly breathe. Say it, said the gnat. Say the gnat is the king of the beasts. The lion could bear it no longer. The gnat is the king of the beasts, he muttered. His face hurt. His nose was running. His eyes were watering. Without saying another word, the once proud lion turned and disappeared into the long grass. The gnat was full of glee. I am the smartest creature that ever lived, he boasted. He began looking for a new place to make his home. He wanted something soft and comfortable. A head draped over a bush was a what looked like a white lacy shawl. That's perfect, said the gnat, and he wrapped himself in it. At first, the gnat didn't notice a small creature moving swiftly towards him, climbing delicately over the lacy threads. When he did, it was too late. Hello, gnat, said the spider. The gnat tried to fly away, but he was stuck. You can't harm me, he said. I'm the new king of the beasts. We'll see about that, said the spider, and he ate the gnat for his supper. And here is a question that we can use our text to answer. What evidence is there that the gnat sleeps a lot? Give two ways. Okay, so let's go back into the text. and Let's look at this page. And here we have fi I can find the word sleep. So this might give us a clue. Let's read this paragraph carefully. The gnat had gone to sleep. He had made himself a swinging hammock on a blade of grass, and he was snoring gently. So this is the first time we hear about the gnat, and he is already asleep. He is also in a hammock, swinging gently, so we know that he knows how to make beds very skillfully. So he must uh, enjoy his sleep, because we first time we meet him, he is asleep. He is swinging in a hammock that he has made all by himself. So clearly he enjoys his sleep. Let's have a look at some more clues. If we keep scanning the text, I can see the word comfortable here. So let's home in on that paragraph. He began looking for a new place to make his home. He wanted something soft and comfortable. So in this part of the story, he's just recently beat the lion and declared himself the king of the beasts. And the first thing that the gnat tries to do is to go and find a bed and go to sleep. So he clearly likes his sleep. So let's come back to our question. What evidence is there that the gnat sleeps a lot? The first way, when the story starts, the gnat is sleeping. So that's good evidence that he sleeps a lot. And the second way is, the first thing the gnat does after defeating the lion is look for a bed. So this clearly tells us that the gnat enjoys his sleep. 
Over to you guys then. We have a question here for you. What evidence is there that the lion thought he could beat the gnat? So you have to give two ways. I will include the text with today's assignment. That will be on Teams. And you need to scan through that um, text and see if you can find two pieces of evidence that tell you that the lion thought that he could beat the gnat. Okay, good work guys and good luck with the assignment.